Hey y'all, hey, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Christian here and you are tuned in for more of my two cents. If you are new to the channel, then welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully you will enjoy today's dialogue, conversation, and kiki. <laughs> You'll click around, stick around, and uh, join the my two cents community because it's a good time over here, okay? All right, and if you are a returning two center, welcome back family. I am so glad to have you guys here and to... Uh, be covering another interesting topic that is currently trending. All right. I was just personally scrolling through on my phone. I had a little time today and I was like, oh, look at this. We got an update. Okay. On some church mayhem. So we're going to get into that. All right. <laughs> so make sure that uh, you got your little snacky snack. I'm going to try not to be before you long. All right. But we're covering a pastor of problems, right? A pastor of past problems. And so with that being said, before we get into Thumb, Pastor Thumb here and his wife, we are going to go over the three points that matter most before we start any discussion. Number one, you're not alone. Number two, you're not crazy. Number three, God, your creator so loves you and I do too. Now, uh, we covered Keon Henderson <laughs> a couple of months ago when he went viral for hushing a member during service um, who was travailing in the spirit or being distractive. Whichever one, if you think she was being a distraction, if you think the spirit was moving, there were two different sides to the coin. People were on different sides of the fence on what was going on with this lady. But today you are going to get to hear an apology. You're going to get to see it with your own eyeballs. Okay. You're going to get to see it with your own eyes. Keon apologized to this lady. And I want to tell you something. I want to tell you something. I feel some kind of way. Made me feel some type of way. <laughs> I feel some type of way. All right. Shout out to <sighs> Rich Homie Quan. But let me play this video for y'all and I'll be back with my two cents. Um, the, the lady with the scarf. Come here. Yes. Come here. Natalie, give me a hug. For those you don't know, this is the lady where we had the viral moment about the hush situation. I, I had no, look at me. I had no idea that my actions will cause you that much pain. And I want to say in front of this body that I am so sorry for the trouble that my actions caused. Bless you. I'm so sorry. Right. Let's leave this place. Everybody say restoration. See it. it okay. <laughs> okay. Let me take my hat down for this one. Okay. I'm going to get back to the camera for y'all soon. One of these days, I'm going to pop up and give y'all some face. Okay. I'm going to give y'all a little face card. One of these good old days. Because... <laughs> I know y'all need to see my facial expressions for this stuff. Y'all, I hollered when she started hollering. When she started wailing, I hollered as I watched the video, laughing. Okay, I hollered laughing because you can immediately see that he realized, okay, this is just going to be another, another instance of her doing what made me go viral. Okay, and not today. He said, "Go get the lady with the lady with the scarf. Come here." First of all, I don't. I know that allegedly she had been a member of the ministry for years, and as he and Shawnee said, he, he, um. I'm, sorry. "I'm sorry, give me a moment." He and Shawnee said when they were on the Tamron Hall show 
after this viral moment. And if you have not seen the viral moment, you can go back online and just look up Keon Henderson Hush. Okay. Somebody's calling my name. Oh, hush. Hush. Shut up. He did not want to hear any of the goings on in that clip. Okay. It was a distraction or a disruption. It was a spirit that obviously was not in um, alignment with what he was actually singing and worshiping at the time. And so he hushed her and they addressed on the Tamron Hall show that it had been a consistent issue, that it had been something that she's known for. And they've talked to her several times about it. When I first covered this story and I talked about it, I took the approach in the stance of members literally turning into content at this point. And the power of streaming your services are actually also becoming the exposure of who you truly are as a woman or man of God or a called, you know, vessel of the Lord. We're getting to literally peek beyond the veil. We're able to go beyond the veil thanks to these streaming services because you guys want platforms so bad that we're truly able to see your character and the type of individual you are and how you treat the sheep that you're allegedly shepherding, okay? And so we were able to see that, and a lot of people didn't like the way that Keon handled her, the way that he hushed, you know, and shushed her, snapped her, I think he snapped her and told her to stop, be quiet or whatever. And you have to understand that even on this platform with Tamron Hall, it kind of was a conflated issue to me because they were there for Shawnee's book release, okay? She was on a press tour during doing appearances, and this was fresh off of what had happened. And with my media training and background, being in radio, I know how this goes. You may have one guest slotted, but if something big happens before that visit, before that interview, before that segment, you're going to reach back out to them and see if you can also include that in the talking points. We want to tap on, tap on this. You know, we want to, you know, hit on this a little bit. We won't stay there long, but we are going to mention it. So bring Keon. Is Keon coming? <laughs> they want to know if Pastor Thumb was going to be in the room. And either he was going to go with her or he wasn't. My guess is he was not going to be on the stage at the Tamron Hall show for her book press run but because it was so close together and when it happened when it occurred fresh off of that weekend why not have him here to talk about it and they did and so that's what made this moment even even bigger and that's when I talked about how sad and shameful it was that this woman now was about to get attention and be under heavy scrutiny by just being a member he signed up for being a celebrity. He wants this. Let's be abundantly clear. Keon wants what he's getting. He wants the, the spotlight, the shine, the glitz, the glamour. He wants all of that. He's checking for it. I don't mind that. If that's what your heart desires and it brings you more revenue, more bodies, more people, more members, more opportunities, great. Go for it. But what you don't get to do is turn your, your pastoral ship, right? into a platform for you to elevate self while demeaning other people, which we've seen happen time and time again. And in this instance with him calling her up to, you know, apologize to her, I we don't know all of the back and forth. We don't know if they talked before then. I'm assuming they had. I'm assuming that he, you know, knew that she was going to be a service. I'm surprised that she still attends, but I understand how trauma bonds, connection, toxic environments, and spiritual manipulation and religious abuse happens. You stick around for more of it, okay? You definitely need your daily, weekly dose of more toxicity. So I get why she didn't leave. I get why she didn't leave. But at the same time, I don't get, I don't get why. I don't get why things continue to have to play out in a way that to me still seems disingenuous. I cannot myself say whether or not he meant his apology. I believe that you, like they say, your apology needs to be as loud as the disrespect. Your apology needs to be as loud as the disrespect. He disrespected her publicly. He apologized publicly. 
I believe based off of the kind of person that he is, I believe he had already talked to her after it happened, which kind of is great. I think that time, this amount of time, it's been like four or five months since it happened. He definitely should not have let that much time go without acknowledging or addressing her. So I'm sure he has talked to her since then and before this clip, which is awesome. But seeing what the title of his sermon was Sunday, From Chaos to Clarity, I am going to assume that the clarity that he received out of the chaos that he also created led him to apologizing to her publicly on Sunday. And if you saw in that clip, Shawnee was in the first part of that clip once he stepped down off of the stage to talk to the woman with the scarf, okay? After he stepped down and talked to her, you could see Shawnee in the clip to the right. She was looking straight ahead. I don't know if she was looking at the screen, whatever she had going on, but she wasn't looking over there where he was at. She wasn't looking at her husband hug and reconcile with the member that he damaged. And I can say so much about that. I am not really a reader of body language, but I'm a reader of body language. Like there are literally professionals for that. I'm not one of those professionals, but I am a wife, a mother, and an employer. I can read body language, okay? I can read facial expressions, and I have a keen sense of discernment. And something tells me that she couldn't care less whether he apologized to her or not, especially in public, because we're talking about someone who literally gets her checks <laughs> from drama. She gets her checks from mess. She gets her checks from toxicity. She gets her checks from discourse. She does not discord, not discourse. She gets her checks from discord. She is a sower, okay, of problems. She's not a solution finder. <laughs> she toes the line all the time on drama, nastiness, and mean girl equality. That's her. So, of course, to me, I don't believe that she probably championed the idea of him doing this publicly, but I believe he understands the PR standpoint of what that looks like, especially after he just asked 2100 of y'all to give him $2,100 in 21 days. He understands where he the role he needs to play. So if we're going from chaos to clarity, let's remember that you created the, the chaos from the beginning. I know people, you know, love to talk about God is not the author of confusion. You're correct. Cause you all are <laughs> there. Uh, who else creates and starts the problems in the drama, in the issues, man, people, humans, we do. You're the drama. You're the problem. You're the problem. And it was, it was funny to me for her to start crying out and screaming the way that she was. Again, that sounded exactly like she did on the stage that day. And to see his demeanor and he was talking, right? He was talking about and telling the people who she was. This is the woman from the viral moment, the viral hush moment. It's like, even, even in that, I don't know. I just feel like her crying was a defense mechanism. I feel like she was probably embarrassed. I did not see any tears coming from her eyes, but I believe that there was definitely an emotional response to him acknowledging her, him hugging her, right? Him pushing her head up and saying, hey, listen to me. I want you to hear me. I apologize. I, I'm sorry. I had no idea. What? You had no idea that the power in the platform that you hold over this member was going to lead that moment to go from private church moment to viral social media moment. No, there's no way that you could have foresaw that. You couldn't have foreseen that because your discernment, well, I don't even know if you were in any spirit at that point, but your focus was to get out your song and to set the atmosphere for what you wanted the people to have an emotional response to. And she was being a distraction in that moment. So of course you didn't think about you shushing her and snapping at her and telling her to be quiet. But every action that proceeded after that, to me, you had control over. When you were asked or invited on stage to talk about a church member publicly in front of millions of people, man of God, that is when you knew 
that what you were doing was wrong. Maybe in the moment on the stage you didn't understand, but I can guarantee you a day, two, or three later when you get on a plane and you head to a studio to record on national TV with your wife and you are asked about your personal pastoral position in a sheep that you lead, you should have been mute. You should have said nothing. You should have declined, okay? I'm, I'm not at liberty to discuss that. That is a very personal matter and we are internally dealing with that and working through that so that that, you know, that right relationship can be restored and that everything can be well in our ministry. It's crazy. It's, cra it's crazy to me. It's crazy to me how people don't make the correlation of what their actions are and what people's responses are to their actions. And now you have to come back and you have to seek clarity from the chaos that you've created. I'm not saying that he's wrong for apologizing. I'm not even saying he apologized wrong. All I'm saying is it could have been avoided. You too can prevent forest fires. <laughs> That's just where I'm at on this, Smokey the Bear. I'm here with it because everything that you've asked for, everything that you've sought out, every platform that you've elevated yourself to and on and for your own purposes or, you know, gain, that has been a self-choice. That's on you. But people who freely sign up to be under your leadership, your covering or whatever they want to call it this week, they did not sign up for your extracurricular activities, for your games, your schemes, your plots, your plans, your, your, your social media phenomena, whatever you're going for, nobody asks for that. So turning church into content really needs to come to an end. Y'all really need to shut these streamings down. It's not making y'all look good. My next video is gonna be about TD Jakes. Y'all ain't looking good out here. And there's no need for me to have an hour long video to achieve this punchline. You all are definitely losing it. You're losing it. You're not winning. <laughs> and it's not because people don't love God and it's not because people are walking away from Christianity. It's because people are, are tired of people. People are waking up and they're deciding, I choose me. I'm not choosing you anymore. Self-preservation. You're choosing you. You're choosing you when you get up here and you ask for our money. You're choosing you when you go on your, your 20, 30, 40,000 plus dollar sabbatical for a week or two. You're choosing you when you do whatever you want to do that benefits your kingdom. Not the kingdom of God, but it benefits your kingdom, your legacy, your generational wealth that you're building. But you have no consideration or compassion for the people you're leading and how they feel. And just as I said before with T.D. Jakes with the Diddy situation about how he put his members in a bad position to even be in alignment with a person like that, who even had whispers of behavior that Puff Diddy are, is known for. Why would you as a pastor even be aligned with him? You're, you're compromising who you are to the people that choose to follow you. No one should have to defend you because you're in a weird, awkward social setting. And same here. No one should have had to come to Keon's defense. But Keon continued to drag this out by going from the church stage to Tamron Hall's stage. From going from the church platform to a nationwide is on your side platform. That was totally unnecessary. As a pastor, no member should ever be content. No member should ever be a conversation outside of the environment that is meant to be safe and to cover and protect them. Y'all love to say that everything is an attack of the enemy, but what happens when the enemy is your pastor? What happens when the villain is also your covering? What happens when the anointing does not destroy the yoke because the, they create the yoke. What happens when the compassion and the consideration literally does not exist? Because everybody is concerned about the clicks, the views, 
the likes, the engagement, the reach. Not only could you not lead me to the Lord, you also couldn't lead me to the nearest H-E-B. I am not interested in anything that you have going on over there down to the church at all. It is great for her that he apologized like they say. Your apology should be as loud as your disrespect. And based off of where we are right now, he's in a better position than most pastors who never make it back to the microphone to apologize for the pain that they've caused the people who trust them. There are so many people in church who have literally never gotten the apologies they deserve, who have never had the wrongs righted, who have never had their names cleared, who have never had their hearts repaired, who have never had their love returned, who's never seen or experienced reconciliation between themselves and the true idol that they continue to put on a pedestal week after week. But they keep signing up for more abuse and more mistreatment and more parading, more disappointment, more manipulation, more control, more isolation. And you start feeling like it's you. What did I do? Oh, I need to fix something. God, empty me of everything that's not like you. Purify me, cleanse me of these feelings, Lord. I know I shouldn't be feeling like this. You're feeling like this because what you're feeling is real. <laughs> you're feeling like this because what you're feeling is accurate. You're feeling like this because what you're feeling is human. It's natural. Hurt, disappointment, pain, suffering. It doesn't feel good, especially when you are coming into a place that is meant to accept you for who you are and how you are. And if at any point they cannot do that, you should be released. I'd rather he asked her to leave the church than to continue to let her be there, knowing that everyone's talking about her. Everyone's laughing at her. Everyone's complaining about her. If that is such a problem for you, go ahead and release her to another ministry that can help her or accept her for the way that she is. Because the way that dumb people stopped clapping and stopped engaging after they, the initial first hug, when she did start out, start again, hollering and crying and whatnot, they was like, oh yeah, we over all of this. It's something to be said of the way that these churches are operating. It flows from the head down. Let's get into some of these comments and then I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up for y'all. Shout out to Larry Reed Live because that's where I actually got this video from. And... I was intrigued when I saw it. I was like, mm, he circled back with the Gucci. He said, everything is Gucci <laughs> and uh, issued that apology. All right. So this comment here from Maya says, I'm confused and, and disturbed by this. This guy went on national television. Yes, Maya. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Talked about this lady in front of the world to see, and she continues to go to his church. Please explain this and help me to make sense of it, please. I just told you. This is how, this, this is how they do it. Shout out. Okay. This is how they do it. This is how they do it. This is how they do it. They love to come back and get another cup serving full of humility. They love being humiliated. They love being humbled for some sick reason. For some sick reason. And I'm pretty sure they had to do quite a bit of damage control to convince her to stay or if something may not be right with her i don't know i just know i know personally of a lot of spiritually immature people who are mature adults like they can take care of themselves their households all of that they can confront other people cut other people off have boundaries in place but when it comes to church <laughs> Baby, there is something lacking, okay? They are not able to stand on the same level of business that they can stand on outside of church. When they get in church, they are putty in the hands of the man that holds the microphone. That's all I'm saying, because I don't understand either. National television, this man sat and talked about a member. He may not have said anything horrible about her, but he did definitely disclose that they had prior, they had prior issues with her for this same thing. Never should it ever have been discussed. The same kind of client attorney privilege that is exercised out here in these streets. You should have pastor member privilege. Don't speak on me. Don't speak on me. Okay. 
Don't speak on me. Where is the scripture for members to be protected? Because y'all love to throw out touch not thy anointed to do thy prophet no harm. Keep your mouth off the man of God. You cursing yourself. Where are the curses for the men and the women of God who keep putting their mouth on the members? When are we going to get some coverage for the members? <laughs> the pastors have a lot of coverage and protection. It is definitely giving whole life policy. This is not term, baby. This is whole life. They are getting a full policy of protection. Not y'all. Y'all just out here with liability. And it's you. You're the liability. Because they are covered. Next comment. Rodney said, y'all complained so much when it happened. Now he comes back to apologize. And now it's manipulation. Make up y'all minds. Like, dang, what happened to forgiveness? Repentance. I'd hate to sit next to y'all in church. Rodney, guess what? Good news. You'll never have to sit next to me because I'm not coming. But. In the event that you sit next to somebody else who is also sharing the same perspective as me, it's not that we have a problem with him apologizing. We understand, at least I do, what a PR correction looks like. We understand that, hey, just given the title of his sermon, okay, from chaos to clarity, I understand that he understands he needs to correct some things. Maybe the same conviction spirit spoke to him that told him, you shouldn't just cap people at $2,100. Some people got $21. Some people got $2. That same spirit came back and was like, oh, and another thing. <laughs> that girl you told to hush, talk to her this week, tell her you sorry. I guess that's how that spirit works for him. It just come through and do like addendums to the message that it sent. And then he corrected the next time he get up. Um, Next, Rhonda, <laughs> Rhonda, Rhonda got some sense. He realized it was not good for his image nor his ministry that he that he had that he was not being empathetic nor compassionate and did not present a welcoming pastor for new members to his church. If you cannot scream in church, where can you scream at? OK, the apology is a day late and probably a million dollars short, baby. That apology definitely came with the deficit. <laughs> we do not have all of our donations. OK, look at me. I can apologize. All right. Now he has some more apologies to issue because he also needs to apologize for that disgusting statement that he made while begging for money about people owing him. OK, you owe me if I've ever kept you from self-deleting. You owe me if I've ever encouraged and inspired you to start that business that you would not have started without me. OK, run me. Just give me my money. That's what it was giving. Keon just wanted that money. But Ronda, you are absolutely correct. He realized that this was not good. I got to make that right. And I will also say, you guys, conviction is real. Now, I won't say conviction by the Holy Spirit. I just mean as a person, like as a human, you know when you've done wrong. You also know when you've done something and you either want to make it right or you're just like, look, I'm just going to make sure moving forward, I never do that again. It's always that fine line of, do I want to repair the relationship with the person or am I okay with where that ends? But moving forward, I'll never do it to another person again. And I think for him, as a pastor, he wanted to make that right publicly, which I believe he absolutely should have done. And privately, I believe he also understood that the weight of whatever his mantle is, and I say that with Cody Fingers, mantle, he has to be able to show that Hey, I can course correct. I can course correct. So look at me. I am so humble. $2,100. Next, C. Lamont said, I think it was nice and integral of him. Even if he wasn't wrong at the time of having her to hush, the internet made it a, big, made it a bigger deal. This is where cameras in church goes wrong. Yes, yes, Lamont. That's what I'm saying. Turn the cameras off. Put the camera down. Put the camera down, turn it off. Turn it off, put your thumb over the camera on your computer, turn it off. Don't stream none of my services because it's getting y'all in trouble. Y'all think that it is helping you reach people, but baby, it is helping us expose you and we love to see it. The fact that it went viral, she had to deal with people in the streets and everywhere. So it affected her more than just within the four walls of the church. So I get his reason for apologizing. He's apologizing for the hurt that the viral moment has caused her. And that's fair. Respect. No, I think 
yes, I believe that he's apologizing for the viral moment that it caused her or the pain that it caused. But I need to tell you what else I believe he should be apologizing for. He should be apologizing for not covering her. Okay? All right. He should be apologizing for not covering one of his own sheep. I told y'all a couple of weeks ago, at this point, the wolf is guarding the hen house. You all are literally in covenant with your enemy. You're literally linked up with your oppressor. You're literally following your problem. But you'll get there when you get there. Okay. It's called deliverance. Shout out to the movie. Next, Cynthia. Meh. He walked away in the middle of her acceptance. Then it was, give me a hug, not may I have one. They should have one-on-one -on -one convo too if they haven't already. Cynthia, I'm going to go out on the limb, you know, it's a, it's a big limb. I'm going to go out here on a limb and say that he did have a conversation with her prior to this. I'm going to say that. I'm going to believe that. Um, I want to believe that because it's been so much time that has passed. I know that Hurricane Burrell has come through. Beryl came through, took the church. But before that happened, he had time to correct what he had done and how it may have affected her. I personally feel like this apology should have come within the same time span of him doing it. But hey, everybody takes their time to get to it. Some people never get to it. So again, Keon Thumb Henderson gets... He gets a couple of points. He gets a couple of points for at least exercising his right to use the mic to apologize for the chaos he caused in her life. Moving on to the next and the last comment from Susan. Susan said, people can never be satisfied. He did not have to apologize at all. I've been in many services where the pastor or prophet corrected someone. I was embarrassed for them, but I've been taught definitely than most. I've been taught differently, child. Help me to read. Um, but I've been taught differently than most. It's good. If he offended her, then he was right to apologize. Not all people will be satisfied. That's the life of leadership. Yes, you are correct. That is the life of leadership that you won't be able to satisfy everybody. But can I offer this to you, Susan? Is it possible that even as a leader of people, you can also not do things to offend people? You can also just not be a nasty person. You can just also choose to walk in true discernment. You can also choose that even though you're going to have to lead people of different backgrounds and social um, social statuses and economic statuses, you can find a middle ground to just be a good person. And that includes how you treat people and how you consider their feelings and the compassion that you show. And if that is a challenge for you, guess what? Your living room is always available for you to lead your family in Bible study. That's what I'm saying. Choose your couch. Choose your couch instead of a church. Okay? Let your counter, let your counter, <laughs> hey, hold your Bible. You don't need, you don't need a whole pulpit for that. Your counter can hold your Bible. You can stand behind your counter while the greens are cooking for Sunday dinner. While the dressing is being baked. Okay? Yes, you can. You can use your own Welch's grape juice for communion and buy your own masa bread from the store like my mama used to do. You can do it right at home. You don't need to have a church if you're going to be nasty. That is an option as well. And her saying he did not have to apologize at all, he did. He did have to. But we're, he did have to. Not he didn't. He did. He did have to apologize. There's a lot of pastors that should be apologizing. They just won't do it. A lot of them don't even think they've done anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but all of them have to apologize. They do have to. You need to apologize. Now, if you're going to do it, that's on you, but you should do it. <laughs> and you should do it quickly. But nobody's leaving, so why would they? I don't think Rob Parsley Flakes has apologized for what he and his daughter did up there on that stage a couple of weeks ago. Like, wait, would never. They're never going to apologize because they don't think they're wrong. They don't think they're wrong. Um... But yeah, that's that's my two cents on what occurred over the weekend um, down to the Lighthouse Church. I don't know if this was held in um, Lakewood because I heard that he told his church members last Sunday that it was time to go home. They were going back home. This ain't our home. This ain't our stuff. And we got to get up out of here. 
that's what he told them that it was time to leave Lakewood and they was going back to their church. So I don't know if he got um a couple of twenty one hundred dollar donations. I don't know if he got all the twenty one hundred dollar donations. I don't know if that check came through from his from his insurance policy, but he found a way to get back over there to that building. And I'm well, not that building. I believe they have another facility that they were able to use. Either way, I don't know this man's business. I just know what they keep on posting online. And at any point in time, y'all can turn them streaming cameras off at your earliest convenience. I promise you, whatever spirit was moving before you connected them will still move when you disconnect them. We do not need to see you anymore. We don't. It's not necessary. It's not. It's like these pastors are so greedy. They just want to touch and reach everybody. I don't know of any streaming Catholic services. I don't know of any streaming Lutheran services. I don't know of any streaming mosques. I don't know any streaming Jehovah Witness churches. It's just Christians. Oh my goodness. Y'all send me like an email on a Monday. Stop. <laughs> Too much. Turn off the cameras so we don't have to see y'all be very unloving very uncaring okay it's not demure it's not mindful it's not considerate it's not cutesy you are like those other girls very mean very nasty very harsh very uncompassionate very inconsiderate you're just like those other girls we don't like it we don't but what we can be grateful for is the more people see it the more people will start speaking up against it and start challenging it by staying home and that's what we want for you too to be free from people like Keon, Shawnee, TD Jakes, and all the rest of them. Free yourself. Free yourself and feel good about it. From chaos to clarity, let this be your clarity video to remove yourself and to be at peace at your home. You never have to worry about being called out in an audience to be apologized to because no one at your house can offend you. No one at your home can hurt you. And it's crazy because people will say <laughs> every church you go to, there's going to be imperfect people. Correct. So I won't go. I won't ever. I don't know why people think that you're supposed to be tested and suffer. You're supposed to struggle through um, engagement and relationship and fellowship with people. I don't have problems with people, you guys. I used to. There was always something popping off when I was in church. I didn't have drama. I have not, not, I have not had drama, you guys, since I've left church. When I was in church, I had so many problems with people. People lying on pe me, people not liking me, people not speaking to me, right? People thinking that I was mean and nasty. People thinking that I was arrogant because I had confidence and I didn't play games and mince words. If you acted up, I called you out. They didn't like that about me, right? I had an, I, I had plans and a vision for my life. I didn't just rely solely on everything the pastor said. They didn't like that. There was a problem. I was always getting called into a meeting. Want to talk to you. Want to tell you something. God showed me something. God didn't show you nothing. No, it didn't. Leave me alone. Keep that to yourself. Right. There was always something to talk about, something to pray about, something that God has show somebody. Be quiet. Be quiet. Leave me alone. Stop seeing stuff about me. Don't see nothing about me because I'm OK. I'm not bothering you. So don't see nothing about me. But since I removed myself, I don't find myself getting called. I don't find myself getting texted at the church. Can, I, can we talk? Do you got some time? Can you give me a call? I want to talk to you about something. I don't get those kind of calls. I don't get those kind of texts. I don't have those kind of relationships that are always on the fritz. I don't have those kind of issues with people that I've A, either worked with or I've met somewhere that they eventually started feeling slighted or as if though my personality is too big or too much, too big, too wide, too strong. You That only happened at church because when you have free will and you truly operate in it oh baby it's offensive to people who want to clank clank you down so in church yes people will always say silly things like there's nowhere you're gonna be able to go where people ain't gonna yes it is home when i'm at home nobody's bothering me nobody's doing anything to me treating me any kind of way calling me into meetings acting like i'm delusional i see what you're doing 
I notice it. I'm calling you out. And I'm also leaving once I'm done doing that. It's abusive. And the more you allow yourself to be subjected to it, you kind of train your subconscious to accept it as something that is normal for the sake of salvation. Like we're all going to go through something. You're right. We might all go through something like a drive through like a car wash, mm -hmm. like a school pickup line, <laughs> right? We all going to go through something, but it ain't going to be the same thing. I don't have to get my stripes in salvation by being abused by the very people I'm meant to worship my savior with. That is crazy. That is toxic. Those are, are how trauma bonds are formed. Okay, you know, people who keep going back to sick, toxic relationships and marriages and situationships that don't serve them and only hurt them. Church, <laughs> I don't know why y'all not putting that in a bunch with the other stuff that y'all going through. You can't stay away from that man or from that girl that keeps your car and broke out your windows and put you on flat tires. There's a problem. But you also can't stop going to the same church that has hurt you, isolated you, talked about you, manipulated you, used you, ostracized you, not supported you, never helped you, was never a shoulder for you to cry on or back to lean on, but you're still there. Okay. The connection, the consonants be meeting. That's all I'm saying. And so if I can call this for what it is and then have people, you know, I showed a great balance of the comments of people saying things like he didn't have to apologize. And that's just the role of being a leader. No, it's not. Hurting people is not a role of being a leader and saying things like y'all only y'all don't want correction. No, I don't want to be disrespected because there's a way for you to actually teach the gospel and not offend people. There's a way for you to actually teach what's written on those on those pages that have actually been edited several times. There is a way for you to read that and not actually be nasty. It sounds crazy. <laughs> I know it sounds far-fetched that you could actually just read the scripture and go home. But no, they have to add a little sprinkle of offense on top of it and then gaslight you and tell you they didn't do it, that it's your fault and you're the one that needs deliverance from strongholds and from, um, what do they call that? When you're hard, hard, hardened, you're, you have a hardened heart, they'll turn on you. You seeing who they are and calling out what they've done and how you've been treated, you have a hardened heart. You need deliverance. You need healing from that. No, I just need to get in my car and go home. <laughs> it's very simple. So from chaos to clarity, that's right. From the church to your couch, that is the clarity that you need on today. Hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Drop down in the comment section below and let me know what you thought about Keon's response, Thumb's response to... Um, the member with the scarf, I hate that he did not call her name. I'm assuming he's talked to her before or by now. Um, but hey, maybe he didn't want to say her name publicly. I, who knows? At this point, it doesn't even matter. But we got the apology or she got the apology, people. So let's uh, let's just uh, at least assume that if it wasn't for PR damage control, it's because this message shifted his heart in the moment and he wanted to make it right. So let's stick with that narrative because it just did the rest of this. All right. Um, like the video, subscribe to the channel. We would love to add you to my two cents crew. Until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.